one of the things that I found in PhD that got me through it was actually my curiosity. Hi, this is Pavel. Thank you so much for joining me. On this episode, I'd like to answer one of the biggest questions that you may face as a potential PhD applicant, which is choosing a grad school. How difficult is it to, to choose a grad school? Is it supposed to be very easy and there's only very few things to consider? Or is this supposed to be one of the biggest decisions you make in life? Let's find out. First, I'd like to say thank you so much for your feedback on the previous video. I really appreciate your support. And if you find this content helpful, please uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. This will really help me out a lot. So I have a few notes as always on this particular topic that I'd like to share with you. When I was faced with choosing a grad school, there were several factors that I had to consider when I was making that decision. First of all, it wasn't just the question about going for grad school or not, taking a step back, I was actually thinking, do I want to do a master's or not? And a short answer to that question for me was no, I really wanted to just go full on steam ahead and enter into a PhD program as fast as I could. And choosing between doing a master's and PhD is a whole other video. When I was faced with a choice of applying for a grad school, I first had to understand and really fully grasp what is it that I am interested in. Because one of the things that I found in PhD that got me through it was actually my curiosity. When choosing a grad school, one of the biggest things you have to uh, take into consideration is what are you interested in? What, is it something that you can uh, study for many, many years? And that in fact, believe it or not, does influence the choice of the grad school that you're choosing to apply to. Because not every university or research institute actually has a graduate school program that you might be interested in or the type of professors or type of uh, core facilities that you might be interested in working or collaborating in. So this is something very important. Are you interested in particular type of molecules or are you interested in particular type of disease model? What is it that drives you? What is it that you would like to investigate? And taking a look at the websites of potential grad schools for those types of um, questions might be a really good thing to do in the, in the very beginning. The second biggest question that you would like to ask yourself is whether or not you have a preference where you would like to spend the next several years of your life. If you do, that may actually in large part influence your decision-making process. And in fact, when I was applying for grad schools, I was targeting specifically going to California. I used to go to a community college there before I was in my undergrad. So I really wanted to come back to Southern California if possible, but I was also applying to a few other places as well. So location in my situation was one of the biggest factors in my application process. That doesn't happen for everybody, but I really was really looking forward to going back to California. So I really concentrated all my effort into applying to specific universities in that area. Basically choosing a place to live is another side of the coin of applying for a grad school because you're effectively, that's what you're doing, right? You're selecting a place where you want to spend the next four or five years of your life. And in many ways, it might influence your career trajectory going forward as well. So do you like the weather in the particular area that you'd like to apply to? If that doesn't matter, good. But for some people, it might. So who am I to judge? Because I moved to California because I really like the weather. I really want it to be in this very nice climate. The other big question about relocation in terms of grad school is your family. Are you able to move away from your family or you'd like to stay really close? What is your personal situation and whether or not it will dictate the types of choices of grad schools that you'd like to apply to? This is something to consider as well. Obviously, not only is it the weather, is it the family, one big aspect of uh, doing grad school is the vibe. Vibe is something very difficult to quantify or explain. The way I'd like to think about it is, for example, I used to live in San Diego for my grad school and I already had some idea about what kind of vibe I expect, the people I would be surrounded by, the businesses I might be surrounded by. That's also important for networking down the line. And ultimately, what is that experience going to look like? If you have some idea about that, that's great. That might make you comfortable about making a particular type of choice where you'd like to go. But if you have no clue, it would be a good idea to try and find out as much as possible what's the area that, that you're trying to apply to. Do they have uh, like good recreation or what are some of the things that you can do besides just 
going to grad school because in large part, you have to maintain a work-life balance for many, many years. And it's very important to go to a place where you feel welcome, you feel you can relax at as well. And that sort of answers a lot of those questions that almost have nothing to do with grad school at all. The next point in choosing grad school, let's say you've settled on a potential location, you know what you're interested in. The big question that comes next is who do you want to work for? Ultimately, the biggest question in a grad school application is what kind of professors would you like to learn from? And that has to take a lot of time on your side when you're applying to grad school in actually studying the types of questions that those professors are trying to answer, maybe reading some of the papers. It's okay if you don't understand everything, but it's very important to do that homework in order to potentially ask to join their lab down the line. So if you cannot find a professor that you sort of resonate with just on reading their bio, reading some of their papers, it's probably not even worth trying to apply for that grad school because chances are you might be stuck with somebody that you don't want to be working for. And that's a big, big commitment. You don't want to quit midway through because you had basically never found a person that you'd like to learn from, a mentor, a professor. D doing a due diligence on, at that point is very important. For example, when I was applying for my universities, I think I applied to a total of six universities. In each of those universities, I had at least one professor that I was interested in working for. And when I was crafting my motivational letters, I would mention those professors by name, mention what they're working for and why I'm interested in joining that particular laboratory. Choosing the professors is very critical stage in this uh, process and dictates in many ways the types of grad schools that you will be applying for. Ultimately, you're going to be there for a few years. How many years? Do you know? I mean, that's another big question. Are you able to commit four or five years of your life? And do you fully know what that program it actually entails? Because in many universities, the PhD program where you have to take courses and do some other things may vary from place to place. So one of the things I really didn't want to do is to rotate from lab to lab before settling in on one laboratory and then going full steam ahead with a PhD. Ultimately, that dictated my choices in applying for different types of uh, grad schools. And fortunately for me, the place where I ended up and actually didn't have that rotational system and I could just directly go into the laboratory of my choice and uh, start doing my PhD much earlier. This actually influences in large part the average length that it takes for a person to graduate. So this is something very important when you're considering grad schools is how long do you want to do the grad school? In fact, the one of the previous videos I've made actually talks about what do you do if you graduate too early and is it a good thing or a bad thing? So setting a goal for how long you'd like to do your PhD for, obviously it might not work out exactly how you plan, but having a clear uh, timeline for this is very important. So this is something to consider the actual curriculum, other courses that you're going to be doing, going to be interesting, is TA a requirement, for example, in many places it actually is, and it does take away from your research experience as well. Some people love doing TA, some people don't. Taking all of those things into consideration before you even set a, you know, a, a list of eight to 10 grad schools that you might be interested in applying is very important. Obviously, you've done your homework. Now you have an idea about the professor you'd like to apply. You have an area of interest. You know that you're going to love the location, but ultimately you're going to be working with people. And it's very important to try and learn as much as possible about the people that you're going to be interacting with on a day to day basis, like your lab mates, your other you know, graduate students in the program, trying to find out as much information from them as possible is critical for making the right choice. The best way to do that is to try and ask them on LinkedIn or try and get in touch with them via email, whatever way you prefer, but don't go into applying for PhD positions blindly. Obviously, at this stage of uh, just applying for grad schools, it might be a little bit too early to just blast a bunch of emails, a bunch of LinkedIn messages to all these pr prospective uh, schools. But for example, if you have a couple of offers already on the table, this is something to consider. Actually, right now, I think in, in spring, you might be starting to receive acceptance letters. So it's very important to try and get as much information about potentially uh, different laboratories that you might be interested in and you don't know which of them you'd like more. The people who work there for a while might actually give you 
a good hint whether or not it's going to be a good fit or not. One other really interesting aspect of choosing a grad school that I think not very many people talk about, the prestige of the name of the school where you get your diploma. Does that carry weight? I feel in my case, I I didn't go to the most prestigious school. I don't think it will be a disservice to say, to say that. Uh, it, it's not a Harvard or Stanford or anything like that. I feel the name of the school where you get your PhD may be a double-edged sword. What I mean by that is if you want to stay in academia, the prestige of graduating from Harvard, from Stanford, from any Ivy League school or something like really prestigious in UK, Cambridge or Oxford does carry a lot of weight. It does come with its own set of expectations. It means it's very difficult to get into that types of programs. It might be very difficult to sustain that level of pressure because obviously everybody wants to go into those schools. It's very demanding. But on the flip side, if you don't really care about the name, what you end up getting is the flexibility in actually doing the things that you might be really wanting to do in the first place, which I think is much more important than having a name associated with your degree. Ultimately, the PhD is just a PhD. It's just a, it's just a degree that you're going to get. Where you got it from ultimately may not matter nearly as much as the experience that you get from it. And frankly speaking, in the industry, I feel like it's a lot less important where you got your PhD, but more the skills that you acquired, how well you can communicate them, uh, how well do you know your science and the technology surrounding it, all those things that have nothing really to do with the name, but it depends. It's, um, it's kind of up to you. I feel being at the high prestigious school might come with its own set of benefits, like having access to much more robust network of alumni. That's very important for sure. But ultimately, I feel the location might be much more actually important than the name itself. For example, I was in San Diego. I didn't go to UCSD for my PhD, which arguably is a little bit more prestigious than the institute that I went to. But I was still in a location where there was so much businesses and biotech and pharma and life sciences overall that I didn't really miss out on the networking aspect of it because I was already in a prime location for it. And ultimately, I feel I was never really judged where I got my PhD from. At least I don't think I was. And I never really looked back at and thought like, oh, I'm not proud of graduating from this institute. In fact, I really am. So I hope this uh, helped you a little bit in, in your process of selecting the grad school. I have more videos coming down the line about different kinds of PhD questions that I get asked a lot. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. Please let me know what you think about this video. And if you have some other questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them as well. Thank you. Give a like if you like this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you so much. Bye.